All right, so if you made it through the first four chords of Little Wing, we're gonna do uh, the second half of this progression and we're gonna take off right where we left off. We're gonna pick up right where we left off, which is the B minor part, okay? So again, I'll kind of like just play it from the top. <laughs> E minor. Again, the chord progression so far is E minor, full bar, G major, A minor, E minor. Now we're going to go to the B minor part. Okay, now this is the first part where one chord doesn't get a whole entire bar by itself, but it has most of it, all right? So just like we did before, we're establishing a root note, which is the seventh fret and the lowly string, a B minor. Now this is actually the third minor chord we've used in the key of G. We already used the natural uh, minor, the relative minor, uh, E minor, we used A minor. Now B minor is the next one that we're gonna do. Now we can do the same thing with the other ones. We use the minor pentatonic scale to inflect that chord through double stopping. Same deal with the B, minor pentatonic. We're just gonna hit the root note. But instead of going a minor third, from seven to 10, we're gonna go seven to nine on the high E string. All right, just like that. Now, if you wanna do seven or 10, that's cool. You know, it'll still sound fine. But I think more often than not, he goes seven to nine, okay? So a B. All right, so what we're gonna do is B, Double stop again, the high E string and B string, seven, nine, now seven B and nine E. And then, we're working our way back to A minor. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the low E string again, that B. Then we're gonna go to the sixth fret, B flat, and work our way to A minor, okay? So I'm getting a root, kind of like a muted chord, and then like a chuck mute, full mute, right? And then back to the exact same thing that we did in the first part, where now that we've chromatically walked from seven to six to five, we're back on A minor. And then now we can do the same tricks we did the first time around. Which is leading us back to this G, the third fret of the A string. So I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on the A minor part because it's really just like you did before, pentatonic double stops. want to do it. Huh? I'm just kind of starting lower. I'm getting like the A and the D string, hammering on to the seventh fret on the A string. Into that C, that minor third, sliding it back to the G. And then the money shot of the entire song. So good right here, okay? So now we've made it back to G major. All right, now instead of playing a regular G major chord, Jimmy would never do that. He's got this thing that he, he, uh, he uses in a few different songs. I know, uh, what is it, Castles Made of Sand? It does the exact same thing. It's a really cool thing, right? So let's just talk about it as if it were a chord voice. We get this G root note, and now we're gonna go to these bottom four strings. All right, so we've got the fifth fret on the D string, open G string, third fret on the B string, 
fifth fret on the A string, okay? Now, this is kind of indicative of what would be like a G major triad with your pinky right here, taking this from a G to a B. Screw that up. So you can think of this as like a G major add nine or even like a G suspended two, but the reason it sounds so big and open is because we're in the key G, and what's happening is this open G string that your fingers are kind of like dancing around gives it this really cool, beautiful open sound, okay? Now once we have this, we can slide it a fret higher into an A, okay? Now the cool thing about this kind of suspended chord type deal that we have here is what's usually here in a chord voice is going to be your middle finger. Now if we slid this a step higher, we'd get an A major chord, but since we're in the key of G, we're leaving the G string open, and we're sliding the other strings around it, we're getting A, which would normally be a minor chord, but right now we have an A, a G, an E, and a B. So it's really not, there's no minor third in there, there's not a C note for an A minor chord to be present. So we kind of get away with this really, this beautiful kind of G to A, back to G, to F, okay? So again, it's this one shape. Again, it's this one shape. We start on the third, oh, I'm thinking of actually as the fifth fret being my root note, this G here. So slide five to seven. Back to five, and then five to three, and then uh, pick it again. Most important part of the song, if you ask me. Okay, so again, take it from the top, uh, from that B, B flat, A with the double tops. the transition from that A minor to the G. Okay, so remember we were double stopping through it. Now this is like a really cool Hendrix thing that you can try out too. So if you notice I'm taking my pinky, which is on the C, and I want to get to a G. But rather than just going C to G, the cool thing about sliding backwards with your pinky and then ending up with your pointer finger as the next root note is you can actually slide back past where your pointer finger is going to end up and then slide forward with your pointer finger to hit the root note. Really cool trick that I just learned from just trying to like play like Hendrix, right? So it's awesome. It creates this kind of like counterintuitive movement thing where you're sliding back and sliding forward, all right? It takes a little bit of practice to get it right, but really just do it slow. Back with your pointer, past the root note, and then maybe so like I'm actually thinking to get my pointer finger to the first fret. Forward. So to really just, you know, hone in on it, maybe practice it like that, and then eventually it sounds really cool. All right, so B, B flat, A, double stop. This isn't like the way he ever like you know totally plays it, but he goes through a C chord. However you want to do it, you can do a C bar chord. I'm just gonna do this open C chord right here. A lot of things that he'll do is he'll kind of go through a scale A B C C. So again, this is just you know more Jimmyisms that we're talking about. I know the next part of the progression is going to be C major to D major. The way we're going to play it is we're going to walk up to the C major after the A, B, B, C. And again, another suspended chord thing. We've got this regular open C major chord. And then I'm just going to put my pinky down on the D string to make it a C suspended four chord. 
It doesn't matter how you inflect these chords, just doing a lot of movement around them is something that Hendrix does all the time, right? So we've got this open C chord. You can do the exact same thing two frets higher. Because now I have an open kind of D major chord. So C to D. Notice too, I'm not just going. There's a lot more of a dynamic to it. It's more of like because he's always, you know, almost always playing at least two notes through a chord, like pieces of chords. And that's how he gets all that movement, all that dyna dynamicism into his playing, whatever, whatever word I'm searching for, help me out here, people. So we've got the C to the D. And then we're gonna kinda end up with one more pentatonic double stop run. And the way you can think of this is uh, we're gonna end up at a B minor kind of position here. So if you think of like the seventh fret minor bar chord of the voicing, we can just kind of run through it. So it's I think the last part is kind of important. Okay, right there. So we're gonna take that from that D chord. C. Now my pinky is on the D string, fifth fret. I'm gonna take this all the way to the ninth fret. One note at a time, we'd be on 90 twice, 70, 10, A, 7, 9. Okay? That's gonna be the last place we're gonna end up. Ring finger on the ninth fret of the A string. But instead of going, we're gonna double stop it just like the rest of them. Okay? Again, through that B minor pentatonic thing we talked about earlier. I'm just hitting two strings at a time instead of one. So maybe the first time I'm hitting the A and the D string, almost like a power chord. Then A and D string 7 and 7. A and D string 10 and 7. 7 and 7. And this one I'm getting a little bit more. I'm getting 9, 7, 7, 7. You can think of this as a B minor 7 chord voicing, however you want to think of it. But it kind of puts like a nice fitting end to the whole thing, all right? Again, it's just a B minor chord, all right? So uh, the whole thing, uh, from the top, I'll kind of slow it down. We have this to the open E string. G major with the inflections to an A minor chord. Jimmy is like such an underrated rhythm guitar player is because he plays the chords a little bit differently while he's singing it. It's not quite as busy. It's still busy for like a rhythm guitar player by most people's estimation, I would say, but it's a little bit more drawn back because he's making more room for his vocals, all right? So, and I think this is where I really realized like, okay, all this crazy stuff that he's going through that is like, it was impossible for me to memorize when I was a kid learning this, it's really just these chords because if you look at maybe like a more quartered out approach of playing those exact same chords in a progression, like. So 
much tighter way to play it. And you've seen like a lot of open chords. So I think it's really kind of worth talking about where those open chords are and how you can kind of still make it sound Hendrixy without doing it eh, maybe as busy if you have any kind of ambitions to accompany someone who's singing it or singing it yourself. Again, remember, he played it in E flat tuned down to half, half a step. So you'd have to sing it higher than he did if you played it like this. But it starts with open E minor. Let's walk it to the G. So again, a, a chromatic walk is something that Jim would do in a lot of uh, other songs. Hey Joe being a great example of that. But we're gonna take this E to this G. So let's just jimmy our way up the string. E, one, two, three. We can do a very similar thing to what we did in the intro. Instead of maybe going Maybe a little less flashy way to play this would be Just like that, you know? Say, it still kind of gets that hammer on. Again, it's not about playing it exactly how he is, just kind of like learning these tricks that you can do over any major chord in any song that you want to do. It's really do this. And that's kind of like where another thing that I never got is like some of my favorite guitar players who I knew were inspired by Hendrix, but maybe I didn't really at first grasp how, like a John Frusciante type, right? Something like this. Like, okay, maybe I just, I just remember being naive where it's like, okay, I, I love both these guys, but I don't really know why they sound the same in my head when like their tone doesn't really sound the same, the songwriting isn't the same. This is a great example of this. Right, something you've seen this probably move before is like. Right, that kind of. Same thing, it's just a major chord with an inflection. Same thing. Like uh, just kind of double stopping through it, eh? finding your own way to add these hammer ons into it. E minor, chromatic walk to a G with the hammer on. We can do the A minor, open it, back to E minor. I didn't do anything, I didn't go up here like you did the first time around. We could have. You know, it's available to us, but maybe this is a different part of the song. It's the same progression. That's why Little Wing is such a beautiful song because it's like the same progression the whole time, but it just sounds different the whole time through. So again, think of that E minor to a G. A minor, now it's open. E minor. B minor. Negotiable that you can't change, you always have to do this part. You gotta do that for Jimmy's sake. Anyway, so we have eight bars of music. We've got E minor, first bar, G major, A minor, E minor, B minor, which actually splits its bar, that last B, with a B flat minor, then A. You get the idea. It's just those same chords and thinking about those chords in a way that you can inflect them and then jimmy it up or maybe just take some of, you know, tips and tricks from a guitar player that you might even identify more with. Again, Jimmy was kind of my guy and that's kind of how I ended up learning a lot of those uh, techniques is taking a chord and then seeing what the possibilities of that chord are instead of memorizing exactly how he played it. And that's kind of like, you know, one thing that you know, if you watch my channel is, you notice that I'm I'm never concerned with playing a song the exact way that the re that a recording is because Jimmy was like my guy and that's how I like learned to play. It was like listening to Hendrix play, trying to play stuff that he played and then just seeing like, oh, he played it different every time. But what wasn't different is like the chord structure behind those chords. And he's just kind of playing around in those chords is being infinitely creative. And that's something that really resonated with me and kind of caused me to really try picking up guitar and try to get good at it anyways. So, you know, I'm not saying that's for everybody. Like if you really wanna 
kind of get note for note uh, the same things that like your idols are doing. That's awesome, more power to you. I would never hate on something like that. But uh, for me and my attention span, I think it just sounds a little bit better if you kind of see a chord, look at the possibilities behind that chord, and then just kind of figure out what you can do. So hopefully uh, this was helpful to you. If you have any questions or comments, hit me up in the comment section, Instagram, the website, or Twitter, and I'll talk to you all soon. Thanks a lot.